Alright, here's a little Sunday morning shop maintenance project here. A little quickie for the day. This is a Harbor Freight, of which we know I don't hold in very high esteem, but nonetheless we have a Harbor Freight engine hoist, or cherry picker as we commonly know them. And I acquired this the same time I acquired the big Rand Carpenter lathe and the um, Sheldon lathe that I acquired. This was part of that that came out of that, that same farm shop. So it needed a new RAM on it, of which there was a RAM there, but it hadn't been installed and everything. So um, one of those things where you've seen the other cherry picker that I had when I picked up the Rand Carpenter lathe, I used it quite a bit there. But, um, you know, I can't pass up a deal on a, on a piece of equipment. So um, good engine hoist. You know, we've got the new cylinder on it now. It works fine. I've used it a little bit, and it's rated at two tons. The downside to this is it's one of the, I think, older models that um, doesn't, the legs don't fold up. So consequently it takes up a tremendous footprint. And I had it sitting here for probably a month before I even put it back together and, and fitted the new RAM to it and everything. And um, just trying to do a little shop maintenance or shop organization. So for a quick little project why uh, we're just going to make this into a folding leg uh, folding leg hoist, and we've got some other stuff we're going to do to it, but for today the project is just to make the, the uh, legs fold up and make it a little more compact so we can store it away. So let me bring the camera in, I'll show you this one leg I've already got marked out, and I'll show you what I plan to do with it. So what I've done is I've already got this laid out. This is where the ends, this is where our plate's going to end, is about here. We're going to do our cut line up here, and I'm working with material I had basically. I picked up some for this, but I could have ran these a little bit longer. This is quarter inch plate I'm using, and I've already drilled these and rounded the edges on them for four pieces we're going to put. We're going to mount one on either side here, weld them in place to the back end, we'll line our holes of course, and then on the bottom we're going to plate it with a piece, and i got a couple of wheels, and they're just cheap wheels to go underneath to support it when it's in the folded position. So uh, these may be a little bit tall for what I wanted, these are a three inch, and they're a light duty caster. But we'll get the if we can get the folding mechanism set up today, that's mainly what I'm after. So we're just going to disassemble this, and uh, I'll take these and we'll cut them off, and then we'll start fitting up our new pieces for them. Now, at some point, we'll probably go back and modify the boom assembly some and the way our cylinder mounts. The way it is right now will be at least a satisfactory solution for storing it. We can just loosen the top ram bolt, fold the ram in like that and set it down there into that position. So that'll at least get us a little more compact and until I decide exactly what I want to do with this upper assembly. I'll probably go back and space it out a little bit more so it actually sits up this way a little bit so it can fold down farther. Um, we may extend it some way and we may move the ram at some point in time. But let's get the first folding part done, see what that looks like, and then we'll decide what modifications we need to make after that. Okay, so here's the setup. This is just the leg going out. This is the back end of it, and uh, this is where our crossbar goes, and this is where we're going to make our pivot. Now, I just got this leg in here as a spacer. In between, I've got a piece of flat bar underneath to hold everything at the same level, 
and we've ground off our edges where we're going to weld this up. And we're going to place this where we want it. Throw a clamp around here, hopefully. I guess we had the other clamp set up for that. And that looks like our spacing's where we want it for our for where we're going to mount this bracket. And then we're going to clamp these two pieces on so that we hold everything in alignment here. Now when we um, when we weld our bottom plate on here, and we're looking at it from the top, when we weld the bottom plate on here, why we'll level everything out, we'll give us a little bit of spacer in between here so that we don't pinch our, our uh, leg too tight when we want to lift it up. It's probably not an issue, but anyway, we've got this in plane here. So but I was going to drill the bottom plate when we got that far to bolt on these wheels. I think since we're the same width as the as our bottom piece of metal, I think what we'll do on the bottom side is we'll just ground off the the uh, plating on them and I think we'll just put about you know probably four little tack welds on the side just to hold that. There's not a whole lot of strain or there shouldn't be a whole lot of strain and if we go to replace these wheels later on why well, it's just going to be a matter of grinding them off very quickly. So that's pretty much the setup. We've got bolts in there to hold everything in alignment. It looks pretty good. And we may oversize these to about a 5 8 or a 3 quarter bolt at some point in time. Right now I've just got them set up for half, so we'll, uh, that gives us room to make adjustments if we need to. So we're just going add to add some little welds along here just to hold everything in position, hold alignment. And uh, then we can unclamp it, flip it over, and weld the bottom side up. We'll do a little bit on the inside. This is what I ended up with. I've got my brackets. I've already drilled the two holes on this side. I'm going to flip the whole assembly over and drill the other two or the other two holes from the other side, and then match them up. And let's flip it over, and we can see a little bit from the other side here, a little bit better. And then it pivots right here on this one. This one locks them in place. Um, got a little bit of a gap here. I start off with a little more than a quarter inch gap on the other side. End up and have to open it up to about a half an inch because it's got to be relieved on the top and quite a bit around the bottom so it will pivot up. And let me get these spotted and drilled.
little more sand than grinding to do, but here's the basics of it. We've got them to where they're both uh, both pivot pretty nicely when we set them up. This will be our arm going out. We do have quite a bit of gap here, but that's just what we're going to end up with. I'm not going to worry about that a whole lot. We'll go. Got a couple more things to do before I before we reassemble it, but uh, if we clamped our leg in position here, of course it's in the way, but let's move it out here a little bit more like this. There's our leg installed. If we had our bolt here to lock it in place, why it would be locked and solid. And lifts up the store just like that. So we'll probably add another little uh, cross pin or something here at some point in time just to lock it in place or a little chain to hook on the back or something so there's no chance of it falling forward without us when we don't want it to. But um, otherwise I think that'll work well. What I am going to do is we'll do a little more fitting to this too, but um, I'm going to go ahead and weld my wheels onto the bottom of it. Like I say, we'll just tack them up in place and... Uh, that will retain them for what they need to be done and if I need to change them later why it's an easy fix. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that and we'll have to get it painted up and uh, get a couple of the right length bolts and then we'll reassemble this. Alright so here's my ugly little pieces I've ended up with. Now I know I'm going to have to go back and probably change these wheels and make a few adjustments so black's what I have in stock. I've got to run over and get some some of this puke orange paint. But uh, let's go ahead and put it together and see what it's going to look like. Alright, now for storage we leave the ram set down here like this. Let's get that out of the way. And take that leg. We can lift it up like that. Take 
that leg and lift it up like that. And that makes a whole lot more compact storage. So, I like that storage solution a whole lot better. It's still uh, bigger than what you see on most of the, on the newer ones that the, the uh, Harbor Freight store is selling. But, it's also, I uh, see these legs will store clear up here, but in actual use they can't set in that far. They actually have to set up about here. For now, we'll leave them right there. We'll have to loosen them up before we let it down again. But that will make that a whole lot more functional for me. It stores out of the way a whole lot easier. Like I say, I think at some point I'll probably put a bigger block on here to raise this out a little bit more, which will allow it to swing down in a little bit closer. Um, you see a few different designs with them angled here and, and different things, but. I think what I'll do is if I just space it out and maybe up a little bit, we'll see why uh, we can we can do that and it'll work fine. Now probably if I would redo the mounting on these, I'll have to think about it a little bit. But if I'd redo the mounting on the ram, we could bring this out and have our pivot point here, bring it up and we could get a little more lift out of it than we have normally anyway, which would probably make it a little bit more useful. But I'll think about it. At least this is a step in the right direction. This gets it to where it's up and out of the way. So this at least makes it a little more useful. Hopefully you found something a little bit interesting there. And you can utilize that idea maybe on yours if you've got, a, got space constraints like most of us do. So any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.